630 with an update. Reporting live in Washington, D.C., Joan Murray, CBS 4 News. Back to you, Keith. Okay, Joan, good stuff. Thank you. We'll see you in a little bit here. Live team coverage continues now from Ground Zero for the March for Our Lives movement. CBS 4 Joe Gorcho is live in Parkland, a community that is intimately aware of the impact of the trauma of gun violence. Joe? Kevin, good morning to you. Again, this event was born out of tragedy from what happened in 2018 in the Parkland School mass shooting. Now, Joe mentioned it, that they're lobbying lawmakers to pass federal legislation, gun reform, to make a difference. I'm joined by one of the state senators who helped pass the MSD school shooting bill here. It's Lauren Book. Thanks so much for joining us. You were here in the aftermath, the days that followed what happened in 2018. What do you remember about those days, about what the survivors were sharing with you in those difficult moments, walking through the school and seeing the pain, seeing the bullet holes. We, um, the the pain, the suffering, the horrific um, nature of what happened here, um, will live on in this community and and with us forever. Um, we walked around the building, brought legislative leaders here so that we could work on that first piece of legislation. It is the floor of where we are and, and what people are looking at today. We have a long way to go, and that's why I'm so thankful that you're here, that. People People are here that Zoe Weissman has organized this. It reminds me of Jackie Corrin, the president at the time of MSD, who's continued to work with March for Our Lives and keeping people's feet to the fire to do what continues to need to be done to keep children in our community safe. We speak with people here and they're grateful for what Florida did back in 2018, raising the age to buy firearms, the red flag laws. But when you speak with people here, they still feel there's a long way to go. Do you feel the same? This, that was the floor. We have a long way to go. Let's be very very clear. We can expand those red flag laws. And these are issues that our caucus and the de and Democrats have been fighting for for a long time, whether it's community-based violence and kids who don't necessarily don't know their names who have been killed at the hands of gun violence to these children. What happened in Uvalde? We have a long way to go. Whether it's banning assault weapons, which is a weapon of war that should never be in the hands of people. I've seen what that does to children in a classroom. There is no place for those type of weapons on our street. To making sure that law enforcement can check on social media to make sure that children um, who may be brandishing weapons, can we can go check on them. There's a lot we can do. With today, nationally, so many other events besides the one here in Parkland taking place, March for Our Lives, how significant do you think it is, not just to have this event here, but those around the nation and hearing the stories from survivors and activists to share this message. How significant is that? It's the most significant thing that we can do because it will keep pushing and making sure that lawmakers do what needs to be done to keep our children safe. I have two five-year-olds that this week in, in Davie were locked down. I couldn't find them, couldn't get them. This is when two five-year-olds talk about having to be really quiet and hop around like bunnies and hide under the desk so somebody doesn't come in and get them dead. That is a reality that should not exist in our country. Country. Mothers, fathers should not have to um, suffer for not knowing who murdered their children. All of these things are realities that we can stop if we continue to do the work and not be afraid to stand up to at the NRA and those who don't seek to make sure that we're doing things. At the end of the day, this governor and the Republicans are talking about open carry. We have to do better. And these types of events, what's happening around the country is going to make that happen. Lauren, we appreciate your time. Stick around for a few more moments. We'll get a few more thoughts with her off camera. But Keith, again, this is why people are gathering today. They're hopeful for around 2,000 people. We'll hear from some survivors, activists, and then there'll be a march around Pine Trails Park here. Again, all on the same mission for more gun reform, not just in this state, but nationally. Keith?